Hi guys, it's Catherine here. I am so sorry. I don't know what's been happening with my um my laptop and why it will it keeps saying like no, you don't have access to post onto this page. But clearly I do on my phone. So, I'm going to try it this way. It means I do have to do a quick little reset of my setup, so bear with me. Um but just letting you all know that I am here for you. We are going to do a little bar class this morning. So thanks for your patience. Hey, welcome to my house. I'm trying to do this one-handed. This might not be the best, the smartest way to do this, but I really am, was panicking and trying to get you to a uh, place where I could hang out with you. I was making fun of Cassia last night. Um, and she said like one, one word wrong in her, or her video um, or in her live. And now look at me. I'm not only like super late, but I can't even talk because I'm so flustered and nervous. So I'm actually going to try, this is really ridiculous for me to try to set up this tripod differently with one hand. So give me just a second. Technical difficulties. Thank you guys so much for your patience. Every time I feel like I'm doing something new, it's like a whole new learning curve. But for whatever reason, my laptop's being a jerk today. I think jerk's okay to say, right? This is still a family-friendly broadcast. Hey, Chris. Okay, it does mean that because I didn't get set up in quite the way that I might like to do this, it does mean I might have a little trouble seeing some of your comments and things like that. So if you are going to comment, like I might be running up to the camera quite a bit. But do let me know right now if you can hear me. Are we good? Give me like a thumbs up if you're out there, if you're even watching. Hi, I'm Catherine. Yay! Hey, Chris! Hey, girl! <laughs> um, so I'm going to just get one more light on because my phone makes things a little like dark and not so cute. But then we're going to get moving. I don't know if Facebook will cut me off if I use music. And I was actually planning on using my phone as my music source today so we may have to switch things around um but we're gonna just get started i'm Catherine. i'm here with balance gym and this is in the members only group i hope it might be going live just right on my own page at this point i really don't even know what's happening but or why things wouldn't work over here but they're working here but hey can you see me you can i sound great thank you chris so we're gonna get started we're gonna start the way i normally do in my bar classes which i haven't taught for balance in a little bit but some of you may remember me i used to have blonde hair we're gonna start with a second position plie but we're in parallel we'll round on through we arch it up, hollow out, dive down, hang out down here. Nod your head yes, shake it no, and then bend your knees, engage your abs, roll on up. We're gonna do the same thing, round through. This is the most complicated part of my class, for sure. And then sway a little here, making a figure eight with your hands. And then bend your knees, engage your abs, roll on up. We're gonna round on through one more time. Arch it up, hollow out, dive down. Shift your hips from left to right with straight legs. Yes, that sound was my hip. They make some beautiful sounds. Bend your knees, engage your abs, roll on up. Turn out your feet. We'll stretch up and over. Take a plie, take it over and up. We're gonna take it over, over and up. And again, don't worry about this piece being perfect. Really take care of your own body. Walk your feet in. And we're gonna start just with a classic little march and twist and twist and again i'm not going to do music today because <laughs> again i'm getting so many error messages i'm scared i'm gonna get knocked off twist 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 Four, three, two, and one. We're gonna come down into a plank from here. So this might be a little awkward for you to see. I'm gonna adjust my camera in a sec, but here, go ahead and find your plank holding here. Hold, hold, hold. You guys are holding, I'm backing up. You'll see more of my crazy house. We hold, we hold, 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 hold. Hold, hold, hold. Let's pile.
hike it up, up two inches and lower. In and up and lower. In and up and lower. In and up and lower. You have four. You have three. You have two. You have one and stretch it back, reach long. Take a nice child's pose here. We'll go into some push-ups from here. Your hands are right underneath of your shoulders. Elbows are in close to the body. We take it down for two. We're up for two. We take it down and up, up, up. Down, up, down, and up. We have four and up. So keep those elbows close to the body. You really want to lean into these. Two and up and one and up and stretch it back. Reach long. Take a child's pose. Take a little wiggle right here. We're going to do one more set of push ups. This time we want our hands wider than the mat. Elbows are going out nice and wide. If any of these feel appropriate for you to do up on your toes. I am so good with that. I'm gonna take it down and bring it up. We take it down and bring it up. I'm gonna try to keep a rhythm here. It might not match the rhythm of the music that you're playing. Oh, what am I doing doing this on my toes? You guys can stay on your toes. I'm on my knees. Down and bring it up. We take it down. We bring it up, we go down, we bring it up, one more, and up. Okay, shake it out. Now, we're gonna go into a weight series. So if you have weights handy, go ahead and grab those. If you don't have weights handy, things I've been using, soup cans work great. We're working with light weights because we're working in a very elongated state, so, or shape. So you work with whatever you want to work with here. Um, you also can do this with no weights whatsoever. So if you want to jump in with me, I'm not going to do any weights. I almost never teach with weights. Shoulders are down and back. We're lifting, lifting. I want you to think about control in both directions here. So if you are not somebody who normally does bar and you're normally used to maybe like a heavier weight, this is not a movement where we're like throwing. So we're really moving with control because we would be working with light or no weights here. We're in, squeezing the shoulder blades together. There should be no pain in your neck when you're doing this. So if there is, think about tucking your chin, making some alignment adjustments, maybe looking slightly up or slightly down seeing if your neck's gotten a little out of whack. Four, and three, and two, and one. Shoulders down and back, we're in, out. We're trying to keep the forearms parallel here. So we're trying to squeeze through the front of the chest, pull in, out, in, and out. In and out, in and out, in. Hold it in, we're gonna lift it up, we're up. Up and hold, up and hold, up and hold. Now this is one that if it's feeling easy, check yourself. Are your elbows out like this? If they are, pull them in. And sometimes it's good to try like the wrong way, so long as it's a safe wrong way. This is definitely a safe wrong way to try. Let yourself do it wrong so you know how easy it is. Let yourself really exaggerate doing it right. Uh, well, I mean, I, I hate saying things are wrong because there might be a lot of value in this exercise for some person in some certain situation. But right now what we're trying to work on is right here, front of the shoulder, lifting up three, two, and one. Let's take the arms out. And I am pretty tall, so I have really long arms. So you can see they're kind of getting cut off. So you might not be able to see that my hands are going in different directions. One hand up, one hand down, twist, and twist, and twist. 
Try to keep the neck relaxed here. If you start to feel pain in your neck, I am not the kind of person who's gonna say like, just keep going. I say shake it out and get right back into it. So I have one hand up, one hand down. I really like to stretch all the way through my fingers. It's a little like kind of nervy stretch. You don't wanna overdo it, it shouldn't feel painful. Twist and twist, keep the neck relaxed. And two, and one. Shoulders down and back, fold it over. We're going in up, hold, in and up, in and up, in and up. Now if you start to feel your neck feeling funky here, or if you just want a little more stretch through the collarbone, go ahead and turn your palms to the floor. I really like that variation to keep my chest nice and open. One thing I see a lot in class when our thumbs are down is people starting to do this little thing with their wrists, which can kind of start to force your shoulder forward. So I like to really think about that wide collarbone, in and up, in and up, in and up. Now I'm gonna turn my thumbs down, I'm gonna lift my elbows and press back. I still wanna think about a really wide collarbone. And again though, if you start to feel yourself sloping forward and your wrist getting all twisted like this, maybe check a different angle here. We're working with such light weights that this should feel really doable. You have eight, seven, and notice I'm lifting the elbow, I'm not dropping the wrist, it's a different movement. Three, two, and one, shake it out. We're gonna do a quick little stretch here. One arm up and over. Little trick for this one, if you have really mobile shoulders, this is me, I have like, my shoulders like to do some crazy stuff. This is like not, not even the max where they'll go, but I don't feel a stretch when I go there. But when I really let my shoulders sink down, like really just get that joint into place, fold at the elbow, and then press my head into my arm, try to keep my ribs in all these places. Then I can start to feel an actual stretch. Like, so sometimes if something feels really easy and you notice you might be going into like, way further of a range than all the people around you. It may be that you can almost like, you may have some extra mobility in that joint. And sometimes if you rein it in and actually engage the muscle and then try to stretch, you might actually feel that stretch in the muscle and in the right place. And I'm not a doctor or a physical therapist. Um, I just really, very interested in biomechanics, so I like to share a lot of that information. And also, when there's no music, like, <laughs> I feel awkward because you're not talking back at me. So I'm just going to keep talking. If you hate it, you can comment, but please be kind. Say it. Say it nicely. How would you say that nicely? Stop talking. I don't know. One arm across the body. Do you try to keep the shoulder down? So if you're like this, you're probably not going to feel it very much. So really, again, engage that, then pull it across. Feel free to find some movement in these little stretches here too. Um, I find, for me at least, a little movement really makes it work more effectively for me. Just a tiny bit of, just keeps everything engaged in the right place. Hmm. Okay, clasp your hands behind your back, heels of the hands together. We're gonna lengthen out here. And then you'll take it up and over. And what I want you to try to do is get your palms to touch. Not just like that. That's my cheat. I'm trying to get the whole palm touching, including that pinky finger side. And then take it up and over. If this feels bad on your elbows, don't do it. And just really let it release. And bend your knees, engage your abs, roll on up. Let's come to your bar, whatever it is you're using for a bar today. So I'm using a chair. All of this work, you really, I mean, you can use a wall. You don't really need a bar at all. I'm gonna move my mat out of the way. If you have a squishier mat, it can sometimes really impact your balance. It's good, it's a good way to train, actually. Um, I like doing balance pad training. If you able to see under my couch you'll see all kinds of like balance boards and things like that big second position 
I've been really trying to work on balance. So we're going to take some plies here. Normally in my bar classes, I would do a stretch at the bar. If you've taken a, like a typical Lottie Burke style bar class, which is how I was trained by Lauren. Um, oh my gosh, if you know Lauren, she's my mentor. I love her so much. Um, but um, that's how I was trained to teach was a stretch at the bar right at this point in class. But with most of us not necessarily having the best bar situation, and with me starting late, I'm going to start with um, just plies right here. So I'm going to take it down and up. I'm in a second position and in external rotation. So for any of my folks who are here who maybe have never taken a bar class before, like this is an awesome opportunity, right? So to get, if you've been trying to get your friend, boyfriend, husband, bestie, whatever, that person who kind of poo-poos on bar, uh, poo-poo being the, that used to mean something kind of like the hoity-toity way of saying, talks down about bar, so maybe I should say it like that, take it down and up. But this is a great way to get that person to take class, right? Because they don't have that embarrassment of being in the room. Not that you should feel embarrassed, but I get it. I was scared of the gym for a really long time. That's another story. I'll tell you that one probably in my stream of consciousness. You're gonna get to know me really well in these next couple weeks. <sighs> Take it down and up. But anyway, in these second position plies, we don't wanna force the turnout. So we're not trying to turn our legs past where they can naturally hold. We're not trying to turn out from the ankles. It's not your feet turning out. It's really your legs turning out from the hips. So you want to feel this in your deep rotator muscles, which are your side butt. As you're going down, for those of you who are used to doing squats, this is really different. So the, that, this is not going to happen because we're actually trying to work from right here, these rotators. So keep your weight in the balls of your feet. Keep all 10 toes down. The pinky toe is likely going to try to lift up, so I want you to really press down through those outer edges of the feet and try to keep the weight in the toes, even though we're keeping our heels down. Take it down and hold it here. So we hold. We're going to start to pulse. Pulse. If any of this feels bad on your knees, first thing I want you to do is come up a little higher, so don't go so low. So stay a little higher. I'm showing a pretty really conservative plie right now. I'm not all the way down here, right? You could totally be all the way down there and you might need some more space between your feet to make that happen. I have been working with a little bit of a narrower plie and a shallower plie these days. Make sure, look to the side, make sure that your knees are tracking over your second toes. So if they are not, if they're kind of rolling in, push out so we're gonna access again those rotator muscles. And then try to find some space in the front of your hips too, which is my struggle. If you have tighter hip flexors, really think about that, that lift without a tuck under, without the ribs going out. It's a very nuanced little lift right through the front of that hip. Take it down and just hold it here. We'll be lifting our heels up and down, up and down. If you hear a lot of cracking, that is not my floors. That is actually my feet and ankles. So for a little about me, why I creak and crack, well some of that is just my body. It just does that. I've got lots of joints that move where they probably shouldn't. And so sometimes my ligaments talk to me very loud way to snap me back into place. But I'm also a dancer, I dance professionally with a bunch of different companies. Contemporary dance is my thing. Definitely trained in ballet my entire life growing up. I still do ballet class every single day, pretty much. Um, even in quarantine, it's amazing. I'm still I have a one o'clock ballet class that I get to do. So if you want details on that, I'm happy to share different Instagram folks who are doing free ballet classes, if that's something you're interested in. Up and down, up and down. Let's hold it up, hold it here. We'll take a little pulse. Pull those heels forward, pulse, pulse. We're not gonna do a ton of these today. Pulse, pulse. Normally I would do about 12 counts of eight. Today that is not happening. Pulse, 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 pulse. I mean, if you wanna do 
12 counts of eight. You could just pause this video right here. Um, and if you know, it's live, I guess you couldn't do that. But if you're re-watching this later, you can just pause it and do your 12 counts of eight. Right now we're at about three counts of eight, just to give you some perspective. Now, I'm main reason I'm not gonna go with that is because I feel like I'm sliding. So um, I have some grips on these socks. I'm just trying to try to get the grippier part on here. Pulse, 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 pulse. So keep going, guys. You do not have to work with your heels up, so you can actually put your heels down. Are people talking to me? Pulse, 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 pulse. Really press out. Pulse, side butt working. Pulse. We have two more eights right here. Pulse, pulse, pulse. And again, find that space. Notice if you started to tip. Pulse, pulse, pulse. So I was thinking of, um, I was inspired by Cassia and Devin doing a happy hour workout. Hold it down, hold it here. And I was like, well, a bar should be the happy hour workout. I mean, come on. There are so many good puns. And we play, could play a drinking game of whenever Catherine says pulse, you take a drink. Well, I mean, I guess they were drinking after the workout. That's probably not a good idea for me to be recommending even drinking during a workout. But golly, sometimes in bar class, like that would be the thing that would get me through it. Although I drink whiskey, so <laughs> a sip every time someone said pulse would just be a disaster. Shake it out. Okay. Um, we're going to move on. We're going to go into some first position plies. So again, all those same rules apply. All 10 toes are down. Your weight is in the balls of your feet. And I want you to think about your under butt here. So we're taking it down and up. And if you've never done ballet before, don't stress about perfect ballet form. The reason for these cues that I'm giving you are so that the right muscles are engaging. So sometimes we talk about first position and we talk about the rotation that we're looking for. And that's just external rotation. It's like a thing that we could all stand to work on in fitness. Think about all 10 toes staying down. The weight is in the balls of your feet again, so the weight is really light in your heels. So just making sure you're not sitting back. Often when our hips hurt in bar class, it's because our weight might be a little too far back into the heels. Take it down and up. And again, here's a fun thing, because you're home and maybe no one's watching. Put your hands on your butt, feel those muscles working. So really feel that side butt. So this is again one of those meme-worthy moments where you could probably screenshot me holding my butt and looking up and please, I just gave you an idea, maybe take it down, squeeze up. I want you to feel those low side butt muscles working. And then I want you to feel a little higher than there and feel what might be engaging above that to help hold you stable in this external rotation. So just getting kind of familiar with all of the muscles that are back there. There are a lot. Your butt is not just like one big muscle. There's a ton. There's a lot of stuff back there. Think about squeezing right at the very top of your under butt. So a very technical term, I know. So right where your butt and your legs connect, right in the center of the top of your under, center of your under butt. I want you to think about those two points and it's squeezing together here. And up, down, and up. But yeah, you can put your hand on your butt and no one not feel shy about it. Keep all 10 toes down. Notice if they have started to change. Take it down, we're gonna pulse it right here. Let's take those arms out, shoulders are down. And we're gonna take it out. All 10 toes down. Go ahead and bring arms overhead. And we'll take it back to center. Awesome. We're gonna take it down, straighten the legs, lift up and lower. Take it down, straighten, lift and lower. Down, squeeze, lift, lower. With the lowering of the legs, we're thinking about resisting. Like you go taller as you lower down. Left. Yes, all those pops are my ankles. 
hold it up, bring the backs of your thighs together, squeeze right here. We'll take it down, squeeze up, down, squeeze up, down, squeeze up, and up. And you can make this as big or small as you like. And again, remembering though, we're not tipping over. We're keeping it nice and upright, keep some space through the front of those hips. Think about rotating from right down here. It's not in your ankles. Your weight is on your first three toes when we're in this releve position. Well, it's on the ball of your foot at your first three toes. Up. 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 Four. Three. Two. One, now take it down and hold it, hold it here, hold, and we're not tucking under, we're keeping it really neutral. Take those arms overhead, hold, take a little lower. We have eight, seven, six, and five. Stretch those elbows, three, two, and one. Shake it out, good work, y'all. So today we'll do a little um, hip loosener or hip opener. Today's class may not be the most intense bar class you've ever taken before. That's not to say I don't teach an intense bar class. I just want to be um, really mindful of our hips this morning. But let me know if you, after you take this class, if you're like, definitely amp up the intensity, give me that permission for you. So right now I'm doing, it's called, like, we call it a swizzle in ballet. Um, but, which is not like a French name, I don't think. But we're pulling the knee in and out. And it should feel really like loose. You're basically massaging your own hip with your leg in and out. And I'm keeping my standing leg, and this shouldn't feel like a super hard exercise right now. This is gonna come back later. We're gonna do this on the mat, and it might feel a lot harder. In and out. I'm trying to keep my hips relatively still, but I'm not trying to be too rigid in this position. All I'm trying to do is let this hip just relax a bit. Now. Give yourself a tiny little hamstring stretch before this next one. So just fold it over, or if you want to put your leg up on your chair, go ahead and fold that over. Just want to make sure that the leg that we're going to swizzle and kick feels ready for it. So, hmm. Holding onto your chair or your bar, we're going to take a swizzle and then a throw. Swizzle, then a throw. Then a throw. You might feel you're standing like quite a bit in this, and that's okay. It's trying to hold you stable as you're doing all this internal and external rotation. And we're just gonna do that on the other side. So just taking a little release after these TAs. In. And out. Just take a few more here. Just finding these little rotations. And then take a little stretch there. If you want to put your leg on your chair, do it. You just don't want, especially if you're not someone who wakes up with hamstrings that are really open. You want to make sure before you're throwing your leg around that it feels like it's ready for it. So, and throw. Throw. It doesn't have to go high. It could be really low. You just want to take that where it feels good for your body. Again, this one should feel kind of good. Your supporting leg is the thing that's actually working. And we'll just do one more. Awesome. We'll go into a kind of more traditional bar exercise where we're folding over, and this is long back. I'm gonna move my mat out of the way. Quick little booty exercise. Fold it over. I'm going down and up. I'm trying to keep my knee pointing toward the floor. Down and up. And up. And I'm trying not to arch through my back. So just check out the difference here. Not trying to do that, but I'm trying to keep my back nice and straight. And you know, this is probably stuff you all already know, but I also 
because I can't see you. I don't know what I need to cue or correct, right? So take it up and hold it and pulse it. This is one where people often feel their standing leg and sometimes we feel it in a way that's not exactly productive or helpful. So if you are feeling your standing leg, like a dull aching in your hip, what I want you to do is shift your weight forward into the ball of your foot, of your standing leg. And you may even lift your heel just a little bit. I want you to think about pulling up through your abs and almost lifting the hip away from the floor. So, like almost trying to lengthen your leg. Because sometimes we just really start to sit into that hip joint. And then those muscles and that joint understandably gets a little angry. You have four, you have three, you have two, you have one. We circle around, around. If you need a break at any point, you take one or you shake it out. And you might notice I'm taking a slightly different angle. So I wanna show you if your back starts to bug you, just go with this angle. Your leg doesn't have to be high for this work to be effective. Take it the other way, around, around. Try to square off those hips. And again, the weight is really forward in the foot. This is gonna help you not feel that like super painful ache in the IT band area. Okay, shake that out. We're gonna do it on the other side. I'm moving this chair around. Hopefully y'all can see. So you can also have elbows on your chair and that will give you a little more support for your back. Square it off and we'll take it down and up, down and up. We want this lift to come, it's really from the hamstrings. Lifts the hamstrings and the booty, the glutes. And up. So I think less about height and more about getting the correct muscles to activate. And I think that sometimes helps me is to think about this also being like a lengthening for the front of the leg. I think we talk about bar is like something that lengthens while it strengthens. Let's pulse it up, up. I feel that like, don't most things lengthen? I don't know, if you're contracting one muscle, aren't you like lengthening on the other side? Up, up, up. Making sure you're not sitting in your hip joint of your standing leg. Really think about being forward. And then change your angle. If it becomes too much, that's not something to push through. I find that that's the one thing that was probably the most confusing for me when I started bar was the, I should feel it in my standing leg. What does that mean? Like, yes, you're gonna feel some work and some stabilization, but let's circle around. If you're feeling extreme pain, like your joints getting overstretched, then something might be wrong about the position for you. It might be you're perfect the position but it's just not one a good one for your specific skeleton. Take it around the other way. We circle. If you want more here, by all means, let go of the bar. Circle. I love balance work. Six and five and four and three and two and one. Shake it out. Okay, y'all. So let's go ahead and we're going to... Come down to the mat. We've only got a few minutes left. So we're gonna go down to the mat. We're gonna do some ab work. And then I'm gonna let you go. Mainly because I don't want anyone else to be late if I am running over time. But find your way down to your mat. I'm hoping you all will be able to see me. I'm trying to do some kind of shorter little ab exercises in terms of space or distance. I'm gonna keep my knees in a tabletop position. Arms are up like Frankenstein. We exhale. We inhale as we lower down. Exhale, lift up. Try to find a nice neutral neck. And up. Just warming up the back. And up. We exhale. And lower. We exhale. And lower. Exhale and lower, lift the legs up, hands go behind the head, flex your feet, and then we're just gonna lift up and down, up and down. If your neck's feeling okay in this, maybe you try and touch your toes. 
lift up. And what I don't want though, don't let your tailbone lift up. So here's the cheat. I'll show you the cheat and you can try that yourself. Kind of like letting that happen. So if you can't touch your toes, it's totally fine. I kind of have freakishly flexible feet that makes it a little easier for me to reach them. But aim for a spot on your knees, your shins, and just try to hit the same spot every time. And again, hands behind the head will be harder. So if you need that neck support, go for it. Two. And one, let's take a twist. We take a twist, 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 twist. Notice if your, I saw, so I caught myself cheating. So notice if your ankles are doing this little shifty thing. Try to keep the ankles squeezing together. We have eight, seven, six, and five, and four, and three, two, and one. Hug the knees into the chest and squeeze. We'll take a quick set of bicycles. So we'll do four counts of eight, curling forward. Keep your pelvis nice and still and stable. Curling up, hands behind the head. I'm gonna take a twist. Twist, think elbows wide. Twist, 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 twist. And breathing, we twist, 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 twist. If you want a little more, maybe try flexing your feet and see how that feels. Twist, twist. You have eight, seven, six, and five, and four, and three, and two, and one. Hug the knees into the chest and squeeze. Oh my gosh, guys. Okay, so I do want to make sure to get you out of here before the next class. So um, we're going to take just a quick little stretch just to finish out finding a little butterfly stretch. I promise next week it'll go a lot smoother now that I know at least what can happen. Folding over, it's been such an interesting learning curve. I'm sure for all of us, like figuring out how to make this all happen at home. Let me know if you like this without music so that it's not distracting. We might try it with music next week. Uh, extend out your diamond so you're a little further out. Let me know if you have any questions that I can answer in the next class. So comment with some questions. Awesome, y'all. Extend those legs out. Go ahead and just reach for the bottoms of your feet. If you can't touch your toes, that's fine. Bend your knees. Folding over, thinking about length through the back of the neck. Holding here. And then let's go ahead and sit crisscross applesauce. Take a deep breath in, inhale, and exhale. We inhale, we exhale, and give yourselves a giant hug because honestly, if you live alone, if you don't hug yourself, who's going to, right? Social distancing. No, but seriously, thank you so much. You did great. It is great that you just showed up today, and that's what's going to get us through this all together is showing up for each other in this way. I'll see you on time next week at nine o'clock. Again, so sorry. Thank you for your patience. And um, I will also see you in my Pilates class or it's a Pilates fusion class. It's kind of like bar Pilates fusion, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 o'clock. So in this group. So thank you guys so much. And I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye.